Hello everyone, welcome to the editorial analysis brought to you by Shankar IS Academy. Today, 21st September, displayed here are the articles that we are going to discuss. The first article for liberty by law. This article is taken from the newspaper, the Indian Express. The second article, first the rain came, then the tears. This article is talking about the problems and challenges of jet community in the Kutch district of Gujarat. This article is taken from the newspaper, the Hindu. So, without much delay, let's, let's begin our discussion with the first article. Look at this newspaper article. For liberty by law. This article is highlighting the recent Supreme Court judgments, which is emphasizing the primacy of Article 21, that is, right to life and personal liberty, even in serious cases booked under PMLA and UAP. These judgments are reviving a pro bail approach in Indian constitutional jurisprudence. At the same time, these judgments are emphasizing that no law can override due process rights. Why no law can override due process rights? Because in India, we are following certain principles like rule of law and due process of law. Let's begin our discussion with the difference between rule of law and due process of law. So, what is the difference between rule of law and due process of law? Rule of law ensures that all actions, whether it is by the government or by the citizen, must adhere to the law regardless of its fairness or justice. In the case of due process of law, it ensures that all laws are fair, just and reasonable and it protects individuals by scrutinizing the fairness of law and legal procedure. Coming to the legal status of both, rule of law is embedded, it is embedded in preamble and it is also interpreted as the basic structure of constitution in the famous case that is the Keshavananda Bharati case 1973. It is a part of basic structure therefore it cannot be amended. In the case of due process of law, it is not explicitly mentioned in the constitution but it is incorporated through various judicial interpretation for example Mena Gandhi versus Union of India 1978. These interpretations grants constitutional status to due process of law under article 21. Coming to the evolution of due process of law in India. We have three important cases. First one is AKG versus State of Madras 1950. It was, it was a case challenging the Preventive Detention Act 1950. But in that case, the Supreme Court held that Article 21 do not require natural justice. In that judgment, Supreme Court endorsed the procedure established by the law was sufficient. As long as the law follows the legal procedures, the fairness of the law itself is not a question. Coming to the second case that is R.C. Cooper versus Union of India 1970. It is also known as bank nationalization case. In this case, the Supreme Court overruled A.K. Gobalan case and stated that fundamental rights should not be read in isolation. This case moved the Indian jurisprudence close to substantive due process, which restricted the parliament from amending laws against the basic structure of the constitution. The third is Menaga Gandhi versus Union of India 1978. In this case, the Supreme Court held that the laws affecting life and personal liberty must be non-arbitrary, fair and reasonable. It connected Article 21, 14 and 19, ensuring that the laws infringing on liberty must pass the test of reasonableness. Now we are going to see the application of due process in India. It is applicable in criminal justice it, because, because due process ensures fair trial, protection against arbitrary arrest of individuals and also provides legal representation. In the case of fundamental rights, through various interpretations of the constitution by the judiciary, the due process has a de facto constitutional status. Therefore, it covers rights like privacy, freedom of movement and freedom of speech under Article 14, 19 and 21. In the case of preventive detention, laws like National Security Act must adhere to fairness. That is, it should not violate the right to liberty of individual unreasonably. In the case of bail under the stringent laws, the courts will apply due process standards to ensure bails are granted when appropriate or even in cases charged under UAPA and PMLA to prevent unjustified detention. So through all this, the due process of law play an important role in ensuring individual liberty and freedom in the nation. Coming to the conclusion, we can see that Indian jurisprudence has evolved from a simple procedural compliance under Article 21 to embracing a due process of law. And this development ensures that the laws affecting life and liberty are not just procedurally valid, but at the same time fundamentally fair and just. So in this way, the due process of law plays an important role in protecting the rights of individual in the nation. So with this, we will move to the main question. The main question is discuss the evolution of concept of due process of law in India through judicial interpretation. How does it differ from the rule of law and what are its implications for the protection of fundamental rights? So this question for a writing answer can be divided into three parts. The first part we have to discuss the evolution of due process of law. In the second part we have to address the difference between rule of law and due process of law. In the third part how it plays an important role in protecting the fundamental rights. So in the first part you can write about the three judicial cases that is the AKG case, R.C. Cooper case and the Menaga Gandhi case. So, in this way you can approach the ants. In the second part you have to write the difference between rule of law and the due process of law. So, we know that what is rule of law, it ensures that 
all people are following the rule regardless of its fairness and justice while in the case of uh, due process of law it ensures that the the following rule is correct or and fair and just so this is a main difference between the rule of law and the due process of law what is the implication just now we discussed the application of due process of law it plays an important role in protecting fundamental rights especially article 14 19 and 21 so try to answer this question with this idea and post it in the comment section we will review and replay for your answer so with this we will move to the next article look at this newspaper article first the rain came then the tears this article is talking about the plight of jet community inhabited in the kachu district of gujarat they are facing a problem of an outbreak of a mysterious fever which already took 19 innocent leaves addition to this the situation became more bad with outbreak of a flood due to heavy rain this article is also talking about other challenges faced by the community including infrastructure under development delayed medical intervention and also less government attention so let us discuss the challenges faced by the communities in remote region in the context of Gujarat. First, we are going to see the challenges in the healthcare access. That is, the major challenge is lack of infrastructure. That includes lack of healthcare facilities. This is mainly due to the isolated geographical nature of that region or due to the difficult terrain connecting that region. The second major reason is rain induced isolation. That is, certain regions will be isolated from the mainstream during natural calamities like landslide, flood, or change in course of river. This will deny access to basic facilities to the isolated region including health. The third major problem is inadequate health facilities at the local level. That includes lack of access to primary health care services, lack of doctors and lack of health care workers. What are the government schemes we have to address this issue? The major government scheme is Ayushman Bharat. It is aiming to provide universal health care access and services to everyone in India. And under this we have Pradhan Mandri Jan Aruge Yojana. It is a health insurance scheme which provides 5 lakh rupees at primary, secondary and tertiary level of medical intervention. It is a great relief for the vulnerable communities in the context of rising health care cost. And then we have telemedicine and mobile health units. This will be very useful in providing health care facilities to the remote and isolated region. But unfortunately, the, the implementation of this plan is still remaining insufficient. Now we are going to see how the heavy rainfall and the flooding or the climate change is impacting the communities in remote regions. If you consider the state of climate report of Asia released by the World Meteorological Organization, you can see that Asia is becoming more vulnerable to extreme weather events. That includes in increased frequency of extreme weather events such as cold wave, heat wave, flood and drought. And in the case of Gujarat, it is very vulnerable to flood during the monsoon time. At the same time, it will also impacted by drought during the time of summer. And the next major challenge is flooding and infrastructural breakdown. We have witnessed this in the recent incident of Wayanad. After the landslide, infrastructure completely broke down. Therefore, it delayed the disaster relief as well as in providing emergency health care. What is the government response to deal with the climate change? Under the National Disaster Management Act, we have established National Disaster Management Authority plays a key role in coordinating efforts, coordinating relief and response in the context of natural disasters. And second, we have Pradhan Mandri Fasal Bhima Yojana. It is a crop insurance scheme it provides insurance to the crop insurance to the farmers in case of crop failure due to climate events such as flood or storm and then we have national action plan on climate change national action plan on climate change addresses the climate change through various initiatives like national mission for sustaining himalayan ecosystem and national water mission the both initiatives plays a key role in the mitigation due to climate change and it also will benefit the public health now we are going to see the health risk in nomadic and pastoralist community. For example, in the case of Gujarat, they are suffering from a mysterious fever. What will be the reason for the prevalence of diseases in nomadic and pastoralist communities? The first major reason is lack of healthcare literacy. That is relying on traditional practices and medicines like herbs and home remedies will make them vulnerable to infectious diseases. And they also lack knowledge about the modern healthcare system. And the next major reason is the nomadic lifestyle. The nomadic lifestyle of the communities will distance them from the healthcare facilities in the in the mainstream of the society the next major reason is malnutrition and unsanitary condition that is lack of access to clean drinking water and lack of proper sanitation will make them vulnerable to waterborne and vectorborne diseases and this vectorborne and waterborne diseases will become a serious threat after in certain times especially after the post monsoon in the post monsoon time the regions including kutch will record an increase in the cases of malaria viral pneumonia H1N1 and Dengue. Now we are going to see the cultural and societal issues in remote communities. The first major issue is transition in the nomadic communities. That is transition from 
nomadic to a settled life and this transition has increased the dependence of such communities on external systems including healthcare facilities and markets the second major issue is socio cultural barriers to the healthcare that is many communities are still holding traditional belief about the healthcare therefore they are reluctant to visit hospitals and this is a major challenge in ensuring institutionalized birth as well as in the fight against to the child mortality and in, and uh, maternal mortality and what can be done in this situation we need a culturally sensitive healthcare approach that includes community awareness programs through that we can educate nomadic and pastoralist communities about the modern healthcare facilities and its benefits but at the same time we can also respect their traditional belief and practice therefore through this culturally sensitive healthcare approach we can take another forward step in ensuring universal healthcare so with this we are coming to the conclusion for this topic so in the topic we discussed the challenges faced by the communities living in the remote region that includes the challenges in the healthcare system how their traditional lifestyle is becoming a challenge in ensuring universal healthcare and what are the government schemes has been taken so far to ensure the welfare of the communities so in this background try to answer this main question so the question is how do environmental factors and inadequate infrastructure contribute to healthcare challenges in remote area discuss the impact on vulnerable communities and suggest possible solutions to improve access to healthcare services in such region so for writing answer we can divide the entire question into three parts the first part we have to address how the environmental factors and inadequate infrastructure contribute to healthcare challenges in remote areas the second part we have to address how the vulnerable communities like nomadic community and pastoralist community and tribal population are affected and the third part we have to suggest possible solution in the first part we can write like the environmental problems like unprecedented rainfall or landslide or flood or earthquake can destroy the poorly constructed if the infrastructure is poorly constructed it will destroy the infrastructure therefore it will delay the healthcare facilities and uh, response disaster response to that region so you can address the first part like this and then the second part how the vulnerable communities are affected because of this geographical isolation or because of lack of you know infrastructure to connect such geographical isolated region it will deny access to that isolated region including health including healthcare access so in that way you can approach the second part the third part you have to give suggestions that includes you know promotion of mobile medical unit using drones and other modern technologies for the distribution of medicines and other healthcare facilities so in this way you can approach the third part so try to answer this question and post it in the comment section we will review we will reply for your answer thank you so with this we are coming to the conclusion for today's editorial analysis if you like the video hit the like button and also give your feedbacks as comments and share this content with your friends to make the competition more healthy and before leaving this channel don't forget to subscribe and also hit the bell icon to receive the on time update thank you have a nice day